So uh, my name is Susan Bird, and I am um, a member of the 50 plus steering committee here. And I'm also being refired. So <laughs> um, this morning, I want to share with you a testimony how God has shifted my way of thinking and the way that I look at my everyday life. It's an illustration of how we can experience victory over some of the intimidating giants that come against us in our everyday life from the spiritual realm. And it's, they attempt to steal our joy, they attempt to make us ineffective in our daily lives, and they attempt to keep us bound up. And so this is a demonstration of growing in um, the trust of the Lord and in faith. I'd like to propose to you that each one of us has a secret spiritual weapon that the Lord has given us, and it's unique. It's a perfect fit for us. It's not like anybody else's. And also, just like David's slingshot probably didn't look like much of anything to Goliath, to the other Philistines, to even King Saul or to David's brothers, it was a powerful weapon. And so we also have a powerful weapon. Um, David had probably been practicing with this slingshot in his position as a shepherd. And so practice resulted in the deadly aim that he needed at just the right time for a big battle against Goliath. As David approached the terrible Goliath, Goliath thought that he was going to come against him with his shepherd's staff. And we see this in 1 Samuel 17, 40 to 43. Um, this is from the New Living Translation. But David picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then armed only with his shepherd's staff and his sling, he started across the valley to fight Goliath. So Goliath walked out toward him, and he sneered in contempt at David. And he said, am I a dog that you come against me with a stick? So as this passage explains to us, David's slingshot actually was a secret and an unexpected weapon that he used against that giant. The idea of a secret weapon really stirred something in my spirit, so I asked the Lord, what is my secret weapon? And he fairly quickly told me that it is a thankful heart. And I said, wow, Lord, that really doesn't sound like such a big deal. And then I remember David, and I remembered that slingshot anointing that he had. So before that even, I, I think I complained a little bit. So I, I didn't have a thankful heart about my thankful heart. So <laughs> um, then I remembered what David faced. And this is what his giant looked like. Also in 1 Samuel 17, he was a Philistine champion. He was over nine feet tall. He wore a bronze helmet and his bronze coat of mail weighed 125 pounds. He carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The staff of his spear was as heavy and thick as a weaver's beam. And the tip of it, it was an iron tip and it weighed 15 pounds. So I thought about that. That was a huge giant that he came against. This sounds to me like some of the spiritual giants that we face in our daily lives. They come to bring intimidation and doubt and fear. When I understood that my personal secret weapon may not look that impressive, just like David's slingshot, I began to be thankful for my thankful heart. And after about a year now of practicing and polishing up that thankfulness, I can see what a difference it has made in my, in my daily life. It's taught me not to take things for granted. It has allowed me to appreciate what I have, even in hard times. And it's enabled me to focus more on the Lord and on other people instead of myself. Um, I, I think that you have to be persistent in practicing. And some days it's harder than others. But it's been an atmosphere changer for me. 
and it has changed my attitude a lot of times. I've been killing spiritual giants of discouragement, fear, uncertainty, and even depression. Daily practice for me may not seem like much, but it might sound like, thank you, Lord, for hot water and a bar of soap and a, to a clean towel to take a shower tonight. Even though I might feel like complaining, I'm just too tired. I just don't feel like taking a shower right now. Um, thank you, Jesus, for a, a husband to share life with and to cook for every day, even though at my age I might think, well, I'd rather have dinner reservations tonight <laughs> instead of cooking. <laughs> thank you for all of my neighbors and how you're refiring all of us, even though sometimes we have aches and pains in our bodies and we don't move quite as fast as we used to. And thank you for a car to drive to the grocery store, for the money to put gas in it, for shelves at the store that are just filled with an abundance of food, and then for the money to pay for the food, um, for the energy and the strength to put the groceries away, and then, f oh, for electricity, for a stove that I can cook the food on. And how about this one? Thank you for all of this, the tractor trailers that are traveling on the interstate with me. They're causing us to have to slow down at times, and if the road's wet, my windshield is really dirty because they're throwing all the stuff off, off the road, but I'm thankful that they are making this country run. They're delivering the goods and the necessities that I need at the stores where I shop. And then thank you, Lord, for my wonderful family. Some of them are serving the Lord, and I'm so thankful, even though I might want to whine and complain that some of them live so far away that I hardly get to see them. So I hope these examples have shown you the thankful heart that God has given me as a secret weapon, and he's prompted me to practice being grateful for even those little things. It's my slingshot in the spirit. It's an atmosphere changer for me. It changes my attitude and it constantly reminds me of how blessed I am. And just um, a lot of times turns the negative environment that I'm in with myself into a positive one, and it helps me keep going in the right direction. But it doesn't stop there, because if I have a thankful heart and I go into a situation where everybody else is grumbling and complaining, I can speak out my thankful heart weapon and it can change the attitude and the atmosphere where I go. So if I'm, for example, <clears throat> in the grocery store line and there's a man behind me and he's just oh, sighing and just complaining because the line is so long, I can turn around to him and I can say, you know, um, thankfully, I, I'm not in a big hurry today, so would you like to get in front of me in line? And that changes the atmosphere for us. Um, how about if I'm in the buffet line, even here, and um, they run out of roast beef before I get there, and other people are coming up to the, back to the line, they're saying, I didn't get my second helping. <laughs> I can say, well, thankfully, there's plenty of food still left to choose from, and think about the wonderful fellowship we're having around the tables. So that changes the atmosphere. I have, t I have tested this. Um, when I've been in traffic and late for an appointment, I can thank the Lord that I'm not going to run out of gas while I'm waiting because I have enough gas in my car. And I can thank him that I have a cell phone so I can call and tell somebody I'm going to be late. So if I'm in the car with other people, the atmosphere can shift, not just for me, but for them too. I've experienced these thankful um, atmosphere changes when I'm with family, friends, and neighbors. It's happened when I've been in public, when I've been in restaurants. It happens when I'm on the phone with somebody. It can even happen when I text someone or when I send an email. So through the process of practicing a thankful heart, I've become very thankful for my own personal secret weapon. It's brought victory, it's brought joy, and it's brought fun into my life as I go around slaying those giants that would want to come against me in my daily life. So I would encourage you to ask, what is the slingshot anointing, that secret weapon that God has given you, 
that you can join forces with the Holy Spirit and you can defeat the giants in your life daily and also in the lives of others. Wait on the Lord and he will not only reveal it to you, but he'll show you how to persistently practice it and to put it into practice daily to sharpen it up so it just comes naturally after a while. What we do then is we run to the battle instead of cowering and going into a negative place. We run to the battle and we take care of those giants with our slingshot that he's given us. So I just encourage you that it, this can be an atmosphere changer. It can change people's attitudes and it will change your mindset into my, his mindset. It'll give you a new perspective. So how about if we take our slingshot anointing, our secret weapon, and we go out, ladies, and kill us some giants. Thank you so much. <laughs>